Hey folks, Mike Naso here from Internet Partnership Radio with the latest on the tropics. And when we take a look out there, it is September 7th, 2010, which means we are only three days away from the climatological peak of hurricane season. But that does not mean that the rest of September, and especially with this season, October, November, will not be very active. You can see we have three features we're watching. We have Hermine, which is still, believe it or not, a minimal tropical storm with a pressure below 1,000 millibars. When these systems form in the Bay of Campeche, they tend to have very strong convection, very low wind shear, very good anti-cyclonic flow over the top of them, high pressure. And the only saving grace is that usually they're moving west into Mexico and don't have enough time to strengthen. When they do get the opportunity, we saw Breton 99 become a Category 4. We saw two hurricanes in the 40s become Category 4s. We saw Alex just a few months ago become almost a major hurricane coming into Mexico, and that was in June. So these systems tend to spin up quick, and that's exactly what Hermine did, and it was a ferocious storm. I'd be willing to bet there was probably more damage and impact, I'm thinking, than we perhaps saw directly with Hurricane Earl, which of course was a much stronger and larger tropical storm. This never officially became a hurricane, but we'll have to wait and see, because it was getting close, and... It formed an eye wall and had some pretty nasty winds with it. There's a small chance, it's a chance, I don't think it's going to happen, but there is the chance that this did become a hurricane before it made landfall. You can see this little doodad in here is what's left of Gaston. Remember, Gaston came off Africa, developed, moved straight west. It continues to do so, and it's still a feature we have to watch. Right now, development chance is low. However, as it moves towards the very, very hot water here of the Caribbean Sea, don't be surprised if convection fires up significantly as conditions get a little more favorable. And then we have a large wave, actually two waves, one up here further north dying out and a more vigorous one to the south moving off Africa. And those will need to be watched for possible development. Now here's the latest on Tropical Storm Hermine as of 4 p.m. It was at 29.9 north. This is 4 p.m. central, by the way. 29.9 north, 98.7 west. Winds were still 40 miles per hour, gusting to 50. It's moving north-northwest at 18. 996 millibars still had gotten down. Uh, 991, I believe, was the landfall pressure. And you can see it's expected to move up and eventually turn through Oklahoma, Kansas, towards Missouri over the next several days by Thursday afternoon, be heading into Iowa and Missouri. And we're going to have to watch that carefully because, as you can see, on the latest uh, RGB image, look at this system. This is still a very formidable tropical cyclone. In fact, it looks better now than it ever has. You can see good outflow, a good band of moisture flowing in, pumping into the circulation. The center of circulation is still showing up right in there. It's uh, continuing to make that movement. And oh boy, if this hadn't, a, first of all, if it would have gone any bit to the right of the track, it would have been a hurricane and it would have made landfall in Texas. Had it gone slower or further to the north, it could have been a significant hurricane, a dangerous major hurricane. Uh, with an outflow pattern like that and with the way it was cranking up, I have little doubt as things were very favorable. You can see here's the radar. It is past San Antonio, it's passing Austin, it's headed towards Abilene, it's going to continue in that direction but make that right turn towards Dallas and eventually up and out but still some good rainfall with it, a very strong potent circulation. There it is on the visible throughout the day, and you can see the system moved inland here across and has quickly accelerated in that direction, but that has not stopped it from looking terrific. You can see the cloud shield from this tropical storm extends all the way up, interacting with the troughiness, of course, uh, towards uh, areas of Ohio, Indiana, and Kentucky, all the way down to Alabama, Illinois, Missouri, and then all the way back down towards Tampico, Mexico. This is all associated in some way shape or form with her mean and there's another look at it on the IR you can see very impressive circulation convection actually built a little bit better as it made landfall which we don't see too often now as far as Gaston's concerned or what's left of it you can see the model guidance that stills running on it if it keeps up its current motion over the next few days it's going to end up in Central America probably uh, Honduras up here or Nicaragua However, the BAMs are indicating it will bend more west and maybe end up in the Bay of Campeche or staying over land. Climatology says it's going to eventually curve northward towards the Gulf Coast, but there's no real indication of that 
The Canadian model doesn't do much with it. it takes it like that. The GF DL model, the H Wharf, they tend to keep it closer to Hispaniola. If we look at the latest satellite imagery of it, you could actually see it is blowing up pretty nicely this evening. That's a really nice image. And if the circulation does get spinning under here, this could crank up really fast back into a tropical storm. And with it being so close to land, rainfall threats are there. So you do not want to rule out regeneration from Gaston, especially as it gets towards the Western Caribbean and those hot, hot, hot sea surface temperatures. You can see uh, about 24 hours ago we had these monster waves. We had this little one here that has since ceased to really exist, and we've had this big one moving off. And you can see what's happened over the last 24 hours. We still have that little turning in here with the first wave, but the second wave is definitely more well-defined, definitely large, and we will continue to watch that as it uh, moves on towards the west. This is Invest 91L, and you can see current motion would take it right over the northeastern Cape Verde Islands out to sea, well out to sea over colder, unfavorable water. So would climatology. However, the BAM models here are indicating this one could stick around and head generally westward. If you wanted to do a consensus, we haven't had much model run uh, on this system yet, but you can see it'd probably be something like that, which would mean we'd still have to deal with it in a few days moving westward. And so we're going to watch this one very carefully. Here's the Canadian model, which you can see doesn't do anything with Gaston, but it does show a system spinning up here in the central Atlantic, a hurricane, and it continues west, a second storm developing behind it. Now, our next two names are Igor and Julia, and at least one storm, almost all the models show forming off Africa into a big hurricane. So we could have a big hurricane Igor out there, but likely a track out to sea east of Bermuda. However, it's far too early to be talking about that. You can see the European model also shows those two systems and does show a little something blowing up in the Caribbean Sea here in a few days. And so could this be uh, Igor, Julia, and Carl? We'll wait and see what happens with that and just how far down the name list we get. You can see, though, over the last few hours, we definitely still have some rotation with that first wave out here, but this second one is the one we're watching to become Igor. I think that's got the best shot at doing so the next few days, but it'll probably be slow to develop as it continues generally towards the west or west-northwest the next few days. That'll do it for the Tropical Update. I'm Mike Naso from IPR365.com, folks. I'll see you next time.